not now, Romeo. He's in Harlem. <laughs> That's right. For the second year in a row, Shakespeare will be performed outside at Marcus Garvey Park in Harlem. That's right. And here with more on a modern version of Romeo and Juliet is actress Natalie Paul and actor and artistic director Ty Jones. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Thank welcome. You. Now, last year, the Classical Theater of Harlem performed Midsummer Night's Dream. Now, why did you all select Romeo and Juliet this time around? Well, Romeo and Juliet is one of those popular uh, choices in Shakespeare. We love to be able to uh, move people in profound and pleasurable ways, and Shakespeare is a perfect way to do it. And Romeo and Juliet is, fits right to that wheelhouse. Now, Natalie, what attracted you to this performance? Oh, well, Juliet is one of the great roles for any actress, mm -hmm. and I was just really, really excited that the Classical Theater of Home was announcing that they were doing it, and um, having known how they, they did Midsummer last year and knowing J Justin's work, I just was like, I can't, I can't wait to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this. I want to play Juliet, and um, yeah, and then the rest was history. Well, now I'm going to ask another version of Romeo and Juliet um, also just finished a successful run on Broadway. Right. Why do you think that Romeo and Juliet resonates so much with people? Why is it so popular so many years later? Um, I think that Romeo and Juliet has a, a universal message. I think Shakespeare, Shakespeare's plays on a whole always comment on the ruling class. And this one talks about how um, small things get into big deals. Mm. It's bred of an airy word. Somebody merely spoke something that someone disagreed with, which led to the death of these, uh, of these young lovers. So how and what way can we look at our lives today and say, are there things that we do mm. to one another whether it's uh, in our personal relationships or business relationships, casual, whatever kind of relationships, that leads us to do things that we question uh, the validity of, of those actions. So. so how did you make that relevant for the Harlem audience? And, you know, there's been thousands of renditions of Romeo yeah. and Juliet. So how, what did you do differently in this play? So we always like to say we like to dust off the classics a little bit. So mm -hmm. what we did was is that we looked at some of the, the issues within, within the black diaspora, right? Mm -hmm. So we took this West Indian family, and this black family and talked about the issues through the words of William Shakespeare that go on within the context of our lives and through our lens. Because oftentimes you can see, uh, you know, black and white as what was done on Broadway and in many other versions. But we like to make sure that it's through our lens and make sure that it's resonant for uh, all residents uh, of Harlem. And now that we're seeing a scene here from it, and it oh, seems yeah. like there's a lot of street fighting and dancing yes. and music oh, in this yes. version as well, right? So yes. this right here is um, uh, the fight between um, uh, Tybalt, uh, mm -hmm. and our, our fights were choreographed by uh, Emmanuel Brown. And this one right here, as you'll see, that is Romeo fighting Tybalt. So um, get him! It's, it's, it's actually quite fascinating. <laughs> it's great, and there's so much dance also as well yes. in the play. Uh, Lakai was our choreographer. He's a fantastic choreographer. So the party scene, the very famous party scene where Juliet and Romeo <laughs> meet, you know, there's there's some great music. I don't want to give it away too much, but some really great music that I'm sure you guys will recognize and maybe will, you know, remind you of what it was like to be a teenager. And so basically, Biggie comes on in the background. Uh, something uh, like that. Uh, uh, you know, but, uh. you know, it's really fun, and, and the dancing is so much fun, and it really brings it home. You know, it brings home the love that these two characters have for each other. And, and we get to see it in action. It's really wonderful. Wow. Now, why was it so important to bring it to Harlem? Well, as uh, part of the Classical Theater of Harlem, we're, we're trying to become the next great American theater company. Mm -hmm. And to do that, it takes, uh, it takes a village, right? So you need the political folks to help you. You need your local businesses to help you. You need individuals. And um, you, you need to make sure other cultural institutions buy into the, to, to the art that you're making. Now, for us, we want to make sure that it's not just art for art's sake. We want to make sure that it's art and commerce. So the foot traffic that we bring to the Richard Rogers Amphitheater, which holds about 1,000 people, mm -hmm. that's great for those local businesses. So we're yes. thinking in a 21st century way as a, as a theater company. Well, we want to be part of this billion dollar industry just like the folks downtown are. Well, how has the community responded? Oh, I, I feel like we've had some amazing audiences. Mm -hmm. We've had a great feedback after the show. We, the cast likes to come out and talk to people and hear what they're yeah. saying. And um, I think it's just a great, unique opportunity as an actor as well yeah. to be an actor um, yeah. in Harlem and not necessarily have too many other titles attached to it, not necessarily, although it's great to be, a, it's wonderful to be a black actor. It's a great, wonderful opportunity to just be an actor. Yeah. And that's what we get to do at the Classical Theater of Harlem and, and we get to represent uh, real life and let people see themselves just mm -hmm. without the titles and the, um, 
yeah. issues of the larger world, but right. we just get to see love, pure love, or pure violence, or pure emotion. Um, so I think that's a great opportunity for me as an actor. It's been a, a gift that the theater has given me. Mm -hmm. What do you hope people take away from the performance? Um, two things. One, that Classical Theater of Harlem is an extraordinary theater company. Uh, and the second part of it is that we are uh, part of uh, making sure that we are uh, part of the economic engine uh, of Harlem as well, too. Mm -hmm. So it's those two things that I really want to uh, find success with because we have three anchors. We have our spring show, our summer show, and our winter show that's coming up uh, mm -hmm. that will be uh, what we're looking to have is a, uh, an evergreen Christmas show. So every year, you know, like folks do mm -hmm. downtown mm -hmm. or exactly. in other regional mm -hmm. theaters, they see Christmas Carol. Well, we've uh, commissioned Jason Michael Webb and Leland Durand. Uh, Jason Michael Webb, by the way, is the assistant uh, musical director on Violet, and he was the assistant mm -hmm. musical director on Motown. Wow. So we commissioned wow. him to create uh, a holiday show for the Classical Theater of Harlem that families can see every single year. Uh, my only directive for him was is to create the 21st Century Dickens. That was it. No small. <laughs> <laughs> Just do that. But I think that's what I want people to walk away with is that um, uh, we're here to stay. We are of Harlem mm -hmm. and uh, for Harlem and by Harlem. Wow. Now, Natalie, Natalie, have you tackled Shakespeare before and what did you do to prepare for this role? Well, I was lucky enough to train at the great uh, NYU Tisch School of the Arts, mm -hmm. and that's where I really got to um, get my hands dirty with Shakespeare and all the classics. Um, but to prepare for this part, I, I, it was great because I actually had the classical training that a lot of times actors aren't able to put to work for whatever reason, but with the Classical Theater of Harlem, um, I was able to put that training to work and also draw on my own experiences and, and look back and, and think about, okay, what was it like to be a teenager at that time? Actually, my hair is for the show. These braids are for my show, and that was one of the ideas I had for my character because I was like, man, all I remember is when you were 16, you just get braids. <laughs> and you, you want to be like Brandy, and you want to sit up in the room sing and whatever and so just like research like that just uh -huh. the heartfelt work of finding out who Juliet was um, so that was it and also you know I have to give it up to the cast mm -hmm. they are so awesome to be around and they really you know helped me grow as an actress and as a person it's been a great experience and you also spoke to us earlier before the show about understanding the lines because we spoke earlier about where for art thou Romeo and right. everybody thinks that means where is Romeo but it means why no, are you yes, Romeo it means, why are you Romeo why why on earth does the one person I have to fall deeply, madly, head over heels in love with have to be the one person I can't do that with? Mm. And so that's what that whole uh, balcony monologue is about. Mm -hmm. And Shakespeare has written some beautiful words, and it makes you really think sometimes about uh, what is something? Is it the name or is mm. it the essence? And um, that's what the uh, that that monologue is about. And so it's why Romeo? Why do you have to say those? <laughs> You know, five letters, you know, or whatever it was, six letters. So, <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Natai, you're yeah. the producing artistic director, but yeah. you also act in the play. Yeah. So, tell us about your character real quick and what a producing artistic director actually does. Okay, so <laughs> my character is Mercutio. Uh -huh. um, I am one of Romeo's best friends. Mm -hmm. So, I'm a troublemaker, and mm -hmm. kind of the the name itself, Mercutio, Mercurial, uh, mm -hmm. you know, fast witted. Um, Troublemakers is is pretty is, is, is pretty Got much it. what it is, and um, and the, my role as a producing artistic director has shifted a bit, which is great. Uh, before uh, we brought on our managing director and our development director, that's uh, David Roberts and Kelly Burdick. My job essentially was the artistic director, managing director, and development director. I wore all of those hats. Wow. But uh, we received a, uh, an award from the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone uh, for about three hundred thousand dollars that allowed us to hire a managing director and a development director and took the company into a whole nother direction. So uh, as we we continue to uh, find uh, funding, you know, through governments and foundations and individuals. You know, we hope uh, that we'll find the kind of success that indeed uh, we will be the next great American theater company. That sounds now, like you're on yeah. your way. Yeah. And so the important thing is, where can people see the classical theater of Harlem's Romeo and Juliet? And Marcus Garvey Park. It's uh, between uh, 121st and 124th and 5th Avenue, right in the heart of Harlem. Uh, it's and for people Richard that don't know, what website? Oh, Where? our website is uh, cthnyc.org. And you're forgetting the most important part. It's free. It is free. Yeah. It it's is free. People can come free. out absolutely free to watch this. And it's family friendly. Family friendly. Yes. And it runs until? July 27th. July 27th. 7.30, oh, Tuesday through exactly. Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And on come Fridays, on okay. we have a great relationship with uh, Jazzmobile because uh, mm -hmm. on Fridays we have jazz and theater. So from 7 mm -hmm. to about 8. 
fifteen or so, you get some jazz, and then right after that, followed by us. Sounds like a nice night out with the it family. Is. Yes, let's All go right. to Harlem, and I can work on my accent. Oh, Lord. Yes. there we go. You work yeah. on your Shakespeare. Well, yeah. We'll work on this commercial break. Thank you guys so much. Continue success. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> no, you did a nice job. <laughs>